Morning. Welcome to the Southwestern Pennsylvania Commission or SPC Active Transportation Forum. My name is Leanne Cheney, Active Transportation Coordinator for SPC, and I'll be facilitating today's meeting, which is being recorded. Though it's sometimes awkward in the virtual format, we'll start with introductions so that presenters and attendees um, can better understand which organizations are represented today, since that doesn't always show up in the participant list. Um, so I'll get down my list of participants, and when you're calling on, if you could just introduce yourself and the organization you're with, that would be great. So we'll get started, um, and I'll call first on Ann. Hi, Ann O'Gorick, Allegheny County Economic Development Department. Brandon. Hello, uh, sorry, uh, Brandon Leach, PennDOT Central Office. Chris or Brandon. All right, so we got Chris Corbran with PEC. I'll move on and then Chris Sandvig. Chris Sandvig, Mobilify Southwestern Pennsylvania, present and accounted for. All right, great. Chris Ziegler. Ziegler, Armstrong Trails. Dan Allwine. Uh, Dan Allwine, Southwestern Pennsylvania Commission. Don Schilling. Good morning, everyone. Don Schilling with McCormick Taylor. All right, and I have two Eds, so we'll go with that. I'm, uh, Ed Engler from North Hills Walk Bike Run Alliance. All right, great. <clears throat> That's Nicole Malay, the Canning County Health Department. All right, uh, Emily. Um, I'm Emily Seganik. I'm with Allegheny County Economic Development. Eric Oberg. Eric Oberg, uh, Midwest Regional Director for Rails to Trails Conservancy. And we have Hasni. Oh, I already did. Can you hear me? Yes, I did. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's <laughs> Thank you. All right, Jason. Hi, Jason Seekston, Washington County Planning. Uh, Justin. Justin Ruggles, Dist uh, PennDOT District 10. Um, Kelly. Kelly McLaughlin, Markoski Engineering. All right, and Kevin. Uh, good morning, Kevin McCullough, PennDOT Program Center out of Harrisburg. All right, and Rachel. Hi, Rachel Windsor, Mobilify Southwestern PA. Ruth. Ruth McCullough, District 11. All right, and the last on my list is Samantha. Hi, Samantha Pearson. I'm with the Pennsylvania Downtown Center and the Pennsylvania WalkWorks program. All right, great. Thank you all for the introductions. It really is helpful to hear which organizations are participating in the forum. And also, thank you for attending today's forum. Um, as you can see on the agenda there, first off is um, Office of Strategic Initiatives and Policy. So we'll start with that and we'll hear from the director of that program, Dan Oline. Hey, thanks, Leanne. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm going to be brief. I just, um, Leanne wanted to give me an opportunity to introduce myself for uh, those on the call that don't know me. Um, uh, my name is Dan Allwine. I'm the Director of Strategic Initiatives and Policy here at SPC. And earlier this year, SPC initiated uh, a reorganization around February that created uh, our new department that Leanne and I are in. Um, it's a multidisciplinary group that oversees the development of regional initiatives uh, surrounding uh, active transportation, freight movement, uh, our environmental programs, which include the SPC Water Resource Center, and, as well as sustainability and resiliency initiatives. Uh, there's actually a position open right now for the manager of our environmental programs. So if you know of anyone or if you're interested yourself, um, it's on our website. And then finally, our sponsored programs development. And uh, that department is charged in um, developing funding applications to state, federal, and local uh, competitive discretionary programs. Uh, we've submitted four grants this year related to the um, bipartisan infrastructure bill. And next year, we're looking to um, to hit that number again and, and also maybe uh, 
do more assistance for our communities as opposed to just SPC applying to the grants themselves. So um, we also stay apprised of legislation and regulations uh, that promote and support the interests of Southwestern Pennsylvania. And um, what our department really is trying to do is just trying to tie in the transportation and priorities and the economic development priorities of our region, just making sure that we're all working uh, collectively on, on the same effort. So that's a quick rundown of the new department here at SPC. We're looking, I say new, it's been a couple months now, but we're looking forward to uh, next year and, and supporting you all. So Leanne, thanks for the little bit of time and the introduction. And I'll kick it back over to you. All right, great. Thanks so much for that introduction, Dan. Um, next on the agenda um, is the non-motorized data collection program. And I'll give just a brief update on that. Um, earlier in the year at our September forum, I provided a detailed presentation and talked about the different types of counting equipment that we have, which include manual um, counters with pneumatic tubes for counting bikes or anything that rolls over the tubes. And then new for 2022, we were able to get some combination counters, also manual, and they were a combination of uh, pneumatic tubes and infrared sensors, so we could count people biking and walking, though those counters didn't distinguish between the two classes. At any rate, what I want to do today is just touch quickly on a summary of what we did in, uh, for that program. Um, so um, for 2022, we had a total of 38 count sites. And that included nine uh, counters on bike lanes, 13 on trails, not that we counted at 13 on 13 different trails. Some trails had more than one counter installed. For instance, uh, the Cole and Coke trail is three very distinct segments. So we had three counters there. And on the Montour trail, we had two counters. We also counted in four mixed traffic locations, which would be shared roads. <clears throat> and then 12 sidewalk settings, um, which Again, some of those had one or two counters um, in a location. So that was sort of a summary of the number of counts sites that we did this year. And currently, um, I'm going through the, the data on EcoCounter, the web-based platform that stores our data <clears throat> and generates reports. And those um, reports or development, development of those reports are in progress. If we counted um, in your community or in one of your, you were one of the sites, we'll be getting those count reports out to you as they're finished. So then what are we going to do in 2023? Um, the good thing is the program has grown from four count sites to 38, but that also um, creates some uh, constraints with uh, staff time. So we're looking at different data collection practices we might consider, or we are considering. We don't know for sure what we're doing, but in 2023, we're looking at the possibility of SPC staff that currently does traffic counts and statistics for motorized traffic to maybe pick up some of this count installation. And also working with our data team about using streetlight data. Um, and we would likely use that and augment it with manual counts. So that's kind of what we have going on uh, with the bike counting program, bike and pedestrian counting. So then um, we'll move on to the next topic on the agenda, which is um, Mobilify. So we'll hear from Chris Sandin on that. Hey, thanks so much, Leanne. Um, uh, if I could have a share screen, I can uh, get started here. Yeah, I, you should be able to share. All right, does everyone see the cover slide, Partnering for Greater Mobility presentation? Okay. Great, awesome. So <clears throat> I want to thank um, Leanne for uh, allowing us to come and speak to you all today. Um, I'm involved and in, have been involved uh, with varying degrees of intensity on a number of committees, uh, steering groups, forums with SPC over the past uh, 10 plus years. Uh, the active transportation forum, probably not as much as we should be. So it's great to share this with you today. Uh, some of you who were on the TDM forum, a lot of this is going to look very similar. I just want to give you uh, practically, uh, actually extremely similar. Um, so I just want to give you a little heads up on that before uh, getting into this. So um, <clears throat> I'll just go through real as we can here, sort of the background of where this came from, what we are and how we work. Um, and then really, I think what we want to get into here is discussions with all of you. Um, you know, here and then elsewhere um, about uh, opportunities to uh, work together or to amplify voices 
on projects and needs throughout southwestern Pennsylvania. So um, I've been at this since 2009, uh, initially brought into a group called Pittsburgh Community Reinvestment Group, PCRG, uh, to start a program uh, that became known as Goberg. And um, <clears throat> my boss at the time was like, we got this money to do this. I don't know how we do it. You go figure it out. So I did. Um, and what I really figured out, which I think a lot of people here, especially because there's so many community oriented folks um, understood is that um, to really move the needle, I think, on mobility in a direction towards um, greater use of active transportation, public transportation and you know, land uses and street designs that uh, foster that, we got to take a two, uh, two pronged approach here. There's the traditional ed education and awareness raising about the issues <clears throat> um, that we have done over the years, I have done over the years, um, whether it's about funding or policy or ordinances and laws. Um, and then there's also working with communities to uh, take those policies and ideas and get them into practice. Um, not really being the MPO necessarily in, in this role, but bringing capacity to places that, but for that, um, uh, uh, we don't see the changes that people want to see. Um, and then bringing, you know, national um, best practices here through bringing revolution in 2018, um, other webinars that I've put on here at Mobilify and at Goldberg uh, and PCRG on a number of these issues. What I have come to realize and appreciate um, in the 10 plus years I've been doing this is to a large degree, those of us that we work with in this field um, uh, and, and are adjacent to this field, um, understand uh, the policy formula um, and what it is that creates uh, equitable uh, communities with transportation choice um, and opportunity. Um, and it's really, you know, the three things you see here in the, in the, in this Venn diagram, um, you know, comprehensive vision, stabilizing, reforming existing funding, you know, incentivizing dense equitable transit development in more urbanized areas and, you know, introducing uh, ways to use other modes with dignity um, in areas that are not so dense. Um, the issue has always been, um, I, I've seen, and also from around the country, is uh, that you know, transportation is a vast, political, highly regulated field. Um, you know, it is a multi-trillion dollar per year enterprise to build, operate, and maintain our roads, bridges, uh, railways, busways, buses, uh, biking, walking. Um, and, uh, you know, as a consequence of that, um, even things such as, you know, overpasses, uh, um, you know, there could be three or four owners of the pieces that make that, you know, a unit. Um, there's always a need here for sort of a, a, a cat herder, I often say, to sort of help keep things move forward. Because while a lot of folks also agree and understand the need for these sorts of things, what I've also found through the years is that, you um, most or entities, especially when we're dealing with municipalities, um, outside some of the ones that have either larger or have made it a priority of theirs, don't really have the, 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 the human or fiscal resources to keep focused on an issue, especially whenever it is a multi-municipal issue, like, for example, what we worked with on Route 51. Um, so, you know, how we help move those things forward um, is really what we're about here. Um, and, uh, you know, why is change so hard in this? Again, um, just go through this real quickly. You know, this is just a tasting of the, uh, you know, on the public sector side, the number of uh, the types of entities that we have to interact with. And then on the, you know, so panoply side of things here, coming from um, community development myself, you know, a lot of these things here are like private developers, local governments, community advocates. Those are things that we're all familiar with in this line of work. But, you know, the other side that we've been bringing in over the years, into those discussions and helping our members as a PCRG and stakeholders now um, try to um, navigate is how you speak transportation, how you understand transportation timelines. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of uh, um, acronyms and bubbles that are added to the complexity of these sorts of revitalization efforts or, or economic development efforts that um, are not necessarily fully understood or we're really, you know, not equipped to deal with. Um, so we've been doing it this way for quite some time in Southwestern PA. This is not to say that there haven't been organizations by any means, especially um, this group, that haven't been trying to move the ball on a lot of uh, projects um, and policies 
Um, but in terms of there being, you know, an actual dedicated uh, piece to this, um, you know, this is where we really come in. Um, this is how we work across, uh, you know, across organizations, across boundaries um, to, uh, to try and uh, make more comprehensive things uh, happen. So we can move, you know, from project, from pilot to project, project to policy, policy to practice. Um, and so that's what we're really about here at Mobile 05. Um, you know, this is something that has been shown to, to work um, over and over again in many places around the country. Um, you know, we work on the partnership based advocacy model. Um, I've often said, you know, if we are doing the actual planning or if we are the ones that are carrying the picket signs about an issue, um, we have probably uh, failed because we're kind of outside where Mobilify typically works. Um, but our, our role here is to really help to lift up things that are happening at the local level and make sure that we can find a way to more regionalize those. This is how a number of organizations around the country have moved in this, you know, with some of them more in the public transportation space than others. We spend a lot of time in that area with trans oriented development, trans oriented communities, um, helping advancing, you know, the great planning uh, envisioning that's happened at the MPO and at the Allegheny County level on those. Um, <clears throat> but also uh, trying to build uh, alliances across uh, boundaries and bringing new people into these discussions that are happening in communities like we did in uh, the Manchester neighborhood of the city of Pittsburgh and helping uh, that neighborhood at least get access to the opportunity to have resources to take a serious look at um, State Route 65 and the feasibility of um, either lowering it or in some way uh, reversing the, the, the division literally and um, uh, culturally that that has and economically that, that highway has created within the neighborhood. Um, so how do we work, you know, kind of led to this before, um, you know, our mission is to engage all communities in collaboration towards secure, securing greater multimodal transportation choices uh, and economic opportunity. We envision a diverse accommodating system across the region that is context sensitive. And we do believe in equitable multimodal transportation that complements and empowers communities. Um, so this is our framework. I won't read through all of these. Uh, I will make these slides available. Uh, so I'll get those to Leanne and Dan um, after we are done here. Um, you know, the, the, the bottom line here is collaboration is where we're at. Persistence is where we're at. We are the ones that are work, work with communities and, and, and municipalities um, and individual stakeholders on issues that are of regional consequence, but uh, very local um, needs um, and don't necessarily have the local focus that uh, folks would like to put to that to provide that in the interim and keep things moving forward. Um, and so just highlighting that there. Um, and again, you know, this is how we advocate and collaborate. Um, and this is sort of how we break things down into policy education, making catalytic projects happen, ensuring equity and community voice in big projects, and ensuring that um, a, a transit vision continues to move forward you know, beyond leadership at an agency level, at an elected official level, um, because these are discussions that in the past we have found we have had over, over and over again um, that often fall by the wayside. Um, you know, we understand that this is not, you know, a here and done sort of thing. Um, I learned that, I think, frankly, uh, I won't say the hard way, but it's actually was kind of frustrating to me that some of the projects we were involved in while I was at PCRG, um, did not get much before the first uh, two or three circles that you see on this chart here, um, largely because of resources to move forward. Um, you know, Mobilify is about uh, working with you through the entire, uh, through the entire um, uh, process here, um, be it big or small. Um, and, you know, the, establishing the relationships within the community and beyond the community make those sorts of things happen. Um, so I know I rifled right through that. Um, there's a lot of other things on the agenda, so I wanted to be conscientious of time. So with that, I just wanted to sort of stop and see if there's uh, any questions, any thoughts, comments, concerns <laughs> that you may have about uh, how we work. All right, we'll skip down a minute or so. Always seems very awkward silence in a virtual format, but I don't want to rush that. All right, well, thank you very much for that um, introduction and explanation of, Mobilif of Mobilify, Chris. I appreciate that. We'll go ahead and move on to the next presentation, which is um, from on the Industrial Heartland Trails Coalition. And we'll be hearing from uh, jointly Eric Oberg with the National Rails to Trails Conservancy and Chris Corban, Corbran with PEC. 
All right, guys. Thank you, Leanne. Thanks so much. And uh, so Chris, Chris and I are absolute geniuses here. We're going to tag team and go back and forth and probably share each of our screens um, uh, back and forth. So I'm sure nothing will go wrong. It, it was a great, great idea by us, Chris. Um, As so, usual. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you again, Leanne, for uh, inviting us. I, I hope that Maybe all of you, but most of you have heard of the Industrial Heartland Trail Coalition. Um, part of the impetus for this uh, invite is that this is we're we're looking at the 10 year anniversary of this um, this effort being you know named and uh, branded as the Industrial Heartland Trail Coalition. And soon, it's not quite ready yet, but very soon there will be uh, a document that Peck has really been leading on developing that encapsulates what you know what happened over the last 10 years and then really propels what we hope the next 10 plus years um you know can, can accomplish and so chris and i are going to just walk through a little bit of the history of uh what's been happening in this effort even pre-ihtc some of the accomplishments and impacts and then a little bit about where we're going and i'm going to start with a bit of the history i'm going to try to i'm going to share my screen and we'll see just how wonderfully this is going to go. Um, I hope you all are seeing this. I'll go full screen. Uh, so very obvious, I hope to most all of you, the effort to uh, connect a regional multi-use trail system in Western Pennsylvania, Eastern Ohio, and Northern West Virginia is much longer than 10 years old, right? The IHTC vision and the coalition that is together now is really, you know, some of the people in the coalition have been at this for, you know, 30 years, and there's been different iterations of what evolved into the IHTC. Um, certainly individual longer trails that are, you know, within the, the region, whether it's, um, you know, the Great Allegheny Passage or the Ohio and Erie Canal towpath. I mean, there's so many of them. Some of the 30 plus year efforts, right? So when we talk about a 10 year anniversary of IHTC, the only reason um, that the IHTC can be 10 years old is because there's been 30 plus years of effort in getting trails built. And you know, the coalition initially came together, um, really started talking about, you know, what does this look like and and, and act like and and what do we how do we want to evolve this discussion from you know, the Tri-State Trail Initiative that was around 2006, 7, 8. Um, and then there was the Power of 32. And the Power of 32 started, and one of the initiatives that came out of Power of 32 was the Regional Trail Network. And the momentum behind that, um, like all, uh, you get a few trail people in a room and all of a sudden, you know, the, the idea of 32 counties was not nearly enough, and so it just really mushroomed. And and that evolved into the Forks of the Ohio Symposium in 2013, and it was very obvious that there was an appetite by, um, you know, advocates and local government and um, a whole bunch of different people from all three states to, to kind of re-energize and, and dig in on this multi-state initiative. And so coming out of that Forks of the Ohio Symposium, um, we went through, you know, there was a series of follow-up meetings and the coalition really formally launched in March of 2014. Uh, 16 organizations signed a partner, uh, a partner agreement, but, you know, throughout the year, and one of the first things we did as a coalition actually was uh, putting together a TIGER application. Any of you that know, you know, TIGER, RAISE, BUILD, uh, <laughs> all the iterations, that, that was no small feat. Um, and again, Peck took the lead on putting that together, but and it wasn't ultimately successful as far as funding. It, it it was not funded, but it was a wonderful organizational exercise. It really was. And so, um, I think you know, it, if that's not a lesson that you've been a part of, a lot of times these big regional um, funding applications really do galvanize a partnership and a coalition in a way that um, few other things do. So ultimately, I find the Tiger application was a complete success, even though it wasn't funded. It really did help um, build the coalition up. And, you know, the, oh, come on now. Oh, it doesn't want to, now my, see, there's the hitch. Now the PowerPoint doesn't want to move forward. <laughs> Naturally. Um, well, that's interesting. 
Okay, I am going to stop sharing because it is not letting me move forward. That is really, I apologize, everybody. I did not expect that. Well, Eric, at least you made it to that first slide. You know, you got somewhere. I, I got, I got somewhere. I get, yeah, sure. I'll take, uh, I'll take that. That's really, really frustrating. Okay. I will be really quick with this last one and share that. Uh, and so the structure now of, and it still doesn't want to let me share. Um, the structure of IHTC, if you're not aware, this is a 1500 plus mile multi-use trail network, right? And um, there was no way to, there was no way to look at this and, um, and, and think that any of the entities that are working as the project support team, which, uh, you know, the project support team is made up of Rails to Trails Conservancy, Pennsylvania Environmental Council, and the National Park Service, RTCA. And we knew that no single organization could realistically manage such a huge geographic uh, scope. And so to try to be as helpful as we can to the partners on the ground who are really doing the key work, we broke it out into corridor working groups, which are just geographically built. And you, obviously Pittsburgh is playing the hub in this entire network. And so we have these corridor working groups that, and these groups meet on a, um, on a somewhat regular basis, uh, COVID through all of the regular basis meetings into a bit of a tailspin, but um, that's kind of how we've broken them out. And each of the project support team organizations have taken um, taken a role in in uh, um, taking a leadership role within the corridor working groups. And there's been a lot of really wonderful work done over the years. And I'm going to pass off a little bit uh, of that to Chris. So Chris, you are up. I'm going to stop. For sure, and we'll see if I run into uh, the, the same issues, but hopefully not. Um, and I just wanted to note to folks as well that uh, feel free to just hop in and interrupt um, if we need to clarify anything or uh, I, I totally missed something that that seems obvious to folks. Sometimes, you know, I think when, when you get so close to a project that there are things that you take for granted um, that you think, oh, everybody understands this or everybody gets it. And, not always the case. So, um, Eric, just confirm for me that we're we're seeing this. You're good. Cool. Cool. I cool. See it. Okay. So, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the ten-year report that we've been working on, and uh, acknowledge that this is just a little bit of a teaser. We're making some final design changes to the report, which, uh, as I'm sure many of you know, always go longer than expected. Uh, but we do plan on putting these finishing touches on and wrapping this up over the next month with an anticipated rollout in like mid January or February. Um, and I, I also wanted to give a, a big shout out to Amy camp at cycle forward. I think a lot of folks on this call have interacted with Amy over the years and um, she's been, you know, an excellent resource as we were pulling this, this report together, uh, having somebody who is so knowledgeable and uh, able to to kind of hone the conversations into the, the, the real important topics and categories uh, can't be overstated. So thanks, Amy. I'm, I'm sure this will get back to you at some point. Okay, let's see if mine advances here. Oh, okay, all right. So we've got the, uh, the vision up on the screen and the vision of the IHTC is that the industrial heartland becomes a premier destination offering a 1500 mile multi-use trail network experience. We've changed this uh, vision slightly, and, and this is where we've ended up uh, while, while going through this 10 year review. Uh, the original vision had a completion date of 2033. And as we were kind of going through a wrap up of, you know, gaps and, and what, uh, what segments are outstanding, you know, and uh, on the way towards completion, we realized that um, that date was not something that we were going to hit, and it really wasn't that motivating. Um, so what was it really doing for us? Not a whole lot. So uh, I think the, the way that we envision this is that uh, while a connected network is still the ultimate goal, uh, focusing exclusively on total connectivity doesn't really benefit like the locals and visiting, visiting riders and communities in the meantime. So we, we've kind of condensed it back into the, uh, the vision that we see on the screen right now. Um, it's, I think, important to note that though we've, we've gone through some changes, 95% uh, of folks surveyed uh, still think this is a, a great vision and it's still important to, to pursue. 
Um, and this little quote came from one of our stakeholder meetings that says, not only does it still exist, but there's still enthusiasm. And I think that's really, really important to, to kind of keep in mind here. Um, throughout this review process, Amy and uh, the rest of the project support team um, caught up with stakeholders from every corridor, and we had some really productive um, meetings, stakeholder engagement meetings that were both really constructive and really honest, um, which I think in, a, in, an ex in itself was, was a great success because there was a level of comfort uh, that comes with a strong network that's been building over the last 10 years that we could really dive into like what's working, what's not, what can we do to improve and further the vision. So I think that was great. Um, I think it's it's also telling that you know we're 10 years in and we still have uh, a lot of the same groups who were engaged in the initial conversations in the IHTC um, are still engaged today. So we we've we've kind of carried through and we've seen transitions from from different agencies. Uh, at the statewide level, uh, multi-state level, um, and even in the individual groups and um, trail managers working on these projects, and everyone is still uh, at some level engaged in this discussion. Nope. Okay. So as we kind of decided to change the, the vision a little bit, um, we started with this idea that increased trail mileage was the foremost measure of success. And uh, we found out that during the, the engagement review process, uh, a bit over half of folks still identified this as a key measure of success. Um, but the same percentage of folks also pointed to an increase in overall trail usage as uh, a measure of success, which was, was pretty interesting, I thought. So we, we had a um, kind of a shift from just connected trail mileage being the, the number one metric to define our success to the, the, some of these other ideas. Um, I tossed a few of these up on the screen here just, just to give folks an idea of some of the things that we heard uh, from individual groups about how they measure success. Um, and sometimes I try to think about this from the, you know, the ever popular uh, outputs and outcomes perspective. And I think if we think of the vision as the outcome you know, of having a premier cycling destination and the outputs as potential ways to realize that vision, uh, we kind of get to the point that it's not just about mileage. Uh, a positive and memorable trail experience and creating this destination for, for cycling and uh, uh, other trail related activities um, includes all these different measures of success. Right along here. Now, what's a PowerPoint without a sort of awkward and unexpected? So, um, well, I'm not going to go too far into all of these. Um, this is just kind of a, a glimpse at, you know, some of the different topics and, and categories that we identified um, through the stakeholder engagement, you know, as far as recommendations go. Um, I'm going to leave everybody hanging until we uh, really release the final version. But most of the recommendations will fall under one or, or multiple of these categories. Um, I think it's it's probably important to note that you know since this is a multi-state uh, effort, not all of the recommendations are always applicable to each corridor. You know how we approach things in Pennsylvania is definitely different than uh, how Eric and, and the crew in Ohio approach things, which is also completely different than you know what West Virginia deals with. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of a pick and choose as with, with most reports and plans, some things might apply to you. Some things might be, uh, you know, on the back burner. So, 1 of the things that, you know, I, I kind of came to as we were. Looking through this, uh, retrospective report was, you know, what are some of the things that, um. That the IHTC idea has has kind of pushed along. And I uh, connected it to this, um, this model right here, the, the network continuum, which I, I came across while working with uh, the Institute for Conservation Leadership, um, ICL, on, on a different project. But I thought it was a, a pretty good way to categorize some of the, the work that um, the IHTC and, and the, the groups that really make up the, the meat of the coalition, you know, uh, wind, up, wind up seeing. So, We've got these three categories connection or collaborate 
alignment, alignment and production. And just generally in, in this table, you know, we see some of the, the examples of what this really means. But I tried to break down some of our, um, what I would call our, our accomplishments in this same format. A whole lot of stuff, so we won't like walk through it piece by piece, but uh, take a glimpse, see what's there, and uh, I'll make sure to, you know, get these slides to Leanne to to send out a little bit further as well. But we have some some great things going on, and we still have uh, a lot in the works as well. Eric touched on on this idea of the uh, the, the Tiger Grant. Um, I think it's worth repeating just because it was really this. This like catalyst moment uh, that that brought a degree of cohesion to the the coalition idea that uh, hadn't been seen yet. Um, pretty wild stuff. And and at the time that grant was I think for five and a half million, Eric. So it was not just a a little little piece of the pie. It was a a big ticket item that included thirteen projects from across three different states. Um, and I think if if I remember what what I've read, because this was a little bit before my time. Uh, Lawrence County was was slated to be the the actual applicant. So that the fact that we had that level of engagement, county level engagement uh, from a Western PA county was was pretty impressive. Kind of set the tone for uh, the, the the weight and the um, opportunity of these projects going forward. So one of the things that we count as another pretty cool success, or a, we'll call it a, a product uh, on that continuum is uh, all the corridor reports that have been produced. Um, and maybe Eric will jump into these a little bit further, so I, I won't hit them too deeply, but uh, I am gonna put some of the links to these in the chat and folks can check them out at a later date. Um, I think it's just worth noting that, you know, we, we, we're, we haven't hit every corridor just yet, um, but we've done quite a few. And they've been great opportunities to engage with some, some pretty key stakeholders along some, some of the alignments, uh, Ashtabula to Pittsburgh, Cleveland to Pittsburgh, Parkersburg to Pittsburgh, the Erie to Pittsburgh uh, Trail and the PA Wilds Loop. Um, and honestly, it was just a, a really good way to uh, collect and collate some of the different segments of developing trail into a kind of a single resource that we could build off of a little bit more in, in the future. So I think I tossed all of those in the chat. Uh, feel free to check them out and get in touch with Eric or I if you have any additional. Another, you know, success or, or product that, that came out of some of the early IHTC work was to bring together a couple of these different mapping resources. Uh, Eck worked with environmental planning and design and the rest of the PSD and a ton of other groups to produce uh, go to trails, um, which is still in existence, but as with most digital platforms is in need of a little refresh of, a, of an update. Um, but it, it was a valuable tool that that provided some uh, local trail groups, the, the opportunity to use like a web based uh, GIS platform for for planning and um, for, you know, discussions around visualizing where, where trail segments were developing. Um, the underlying data, I think, for a lot of the, this, this work and go to trails has also informed some other projects. Uh, I think we used some of this information as the basis for the Allegheny Green Web project. And uh, along the way, you know, I think we've learned a lot of things of how we organize uh, the, the data related to trails and mapping that um, is, is kind of, uh, you know, guiding the, the way to a, a more efficient approach to organizing this info, you know, in the future. I'm also going to toss this uh, go to trails link in the chat. Everybody's got a lot of homework reading to dig into. As Eric mentioned, uh, we've we've had no shortage of, of meetings, even though um, COVID, of course, you know, threw a wrench in all these works. Uh, I feel like our meetings, you know, continued pretty pretty steadily. Uh, we used the virtual space to provide some some time to to catch up with our partners from around the, the footprint. Um, we heard from basically everybody from, you know, just social catch up and a lot of really great banter to uh, folks exchanging, you know, approaches to to solving common problems and really just, you know, some some local experts on on how to, uh, you know, 
like just a single development challenge with with trails or you know programming or, or anything related to the work that we do. Um, a lot of our partners, you know, were were really. Uh, it, I think they embraced the, the virtual format and, you know, we're, we're pretty uh, magnanimous in, in how they participated with us, kind of rolling with some of these early punches and letting us figure out how best to use this platform uh, to continue collaborating in the ways that we had. Um, it was great for me. I, I enjoyed uh, figuring it out and then also using what I learned from the IHTC meetings in a whole mess of other meetings. Um, additionally, we've had a few summits. We had a, a collabor collaboration summit, I guess, with the uh, Cleveland Trails, Greater Cleveland, Greater Cleveland Trails and Greenways. Is that right, Eric? Am I close? Cool. Yep, that's it. All right, that, that was a, that was a fun virtual one. We also have a photo in the bottom right from our Morgantown summit, which I think you can see turned out to be a pretty great time. Just a couple other quick ones here. Uh, we produced some of these uh, small itineraries, the trail trips, and a uh, accompanying story map version that is just designed to you know help uh, guide folks to some of the current offerings for for trails and uh, experiencing some of the um, things that the local towns and communities have to offer. These also need an update, as I'm sure Chris D will remind me later. We need to swap out the logo and the name in the top right in this one. Um, something we'll, we'll get to over the winter here. In response to uh, some, some other meetings about how we uh, can support external communications for some of the groups of the IHTC, um, RTC, and the rest of the PST, but mostly RTC, uh, worked out. Um, you know, a number of different shoots on on segments of trail from around the network and uh, produced some high quality photos that are centrally hosted that um, all the groups of the IHTC can uh, can draw on. So if, if you have a publication or a newsletter that you need to put out and you haven't had a chance, go get some new photos. You can uh, pull one from this archive and save yourself a little bit of doing. And Eric, I can put the link to this in the chat, right? Yep, please. Eric, were you going to talk a little bit more about the, the ARC grant and all that stuff, or should I jump into it? Yeah, no, I'm going to talk about funding opportunities and things like that next. Yep. Cool. So I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i leave this one to uh, for Eric, but, you know, I just wanted to re return to it um, just briefly um, and not just because I am the cover model. So I think that's what we've got on my side. Any any questions, any relevant stories, concerns? So I like I like this. I have a question it's here affirmed. in the chat box, Chris. Um, is there a master map of where all the trails are located? Master map. We have um we have a, a couple different things. We have a, a static map that I think I pulled through in one of the slides. That we kind of use as uh, general outreach, uh, yep. but we are due for for an update. You know, we've had over the last couple of years quite a few segments of trail change their um, development status. So while this is kind of like a, a big view of you know what's what's planned, proposed, and existing currently, we do uh, plan on on rehashing you know the the current state of what trails are open. Uh, where you can find them and where you can hit some of the trailheads. So, yeah, the only on. the only interactive map is Go to Trails, which has you know, as Chris said, is is still there. It can still be looked at. Um, I don't think the energy there's not a whole lot of editing and things like that going into Go to Trails. So, um, the visioning map on the right it it'll tell you what trails, but it's not interactive. It's static. Um, Go to Trails is is a GIS based interactive. Uh, that's probably your best bet. And I love the idea of the park and ride um, that 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 hasn't happened at a uh, IHTC level. And I, I many of you, I know there's a few of you who are you know trail managers within the network. I don't know, maybe it's happening at a more local level, but um, at a larger project support team for IHTC, those those conversations have not happened. Hi, this is Joel from Butler County, and I just wanted to to elaborate a little bit on what you just said there. Um, we've um, tried to coordinate with PennDOT on several different park and rides for, you know, 
running these trails in to, uh, to people to be able to commute, to catch the bus, leave their bike at the park or ride and so forth. So it's just a thought, something that uh, sure. you all should maybe think about. It's, it, I think it would be highly eligible for grant money. Um, I think connecting trails in Butler County has always been one of our goals, connecting some of the trails um, even into Marshall Township in Allegheny County from Cranberry and then possibly from Jackson Township. So it's just a thought that uh, you might consider that. But yeah, I, I think it's great. So I'm gonna quickly go through a few of the impacts that really I think that this vision has allowed our, you know, the local coalition members to take advantage of. Um, and, and I think it's really greased the wheels for certain things. First one I'm going to flash up here, the Great American Rail Trail. This is you know, a Rails to Trails Conservancy vision uh, that has been 35 years in the making, but only um, only released the route and really started putting time and energy organizationally into it four years ago. It obviously uses the CNO and the Great Allegheny Passage, but then it also uses um, it also uses some of the IHTC network once it gets to Pittsburgh, heading over to the Montour and the Panhandle and across. So really. Things like the IHTC and all of the work over the last 30 years in getting the gap and others built have allowed this vision to go public essentially. And, and so I think this is kind of the, the big the, the big impact of all of this work that's happening locally and regionally is that now there's a national vision that really has a chance to come through. Um, and, and that's no small thing. On that note, while you're on that slide, um, Eric, Please. Like to, the great American. Um, I'd just like to point out how fortunate I think we are here in southwestern Pennsylvania that a good portion of this trail goes through our region. And we talk about the economic benefit and vitality that the, yeah. a trail of this nature would generate is amazing. So yeah. thanks for sharing that. No, I appreciate that, Leanne. And when I'm done, uh, when I'm done sharing my screen, I'll I'll make sure and share. We did a um, potential economic impact study with Headwaters Economics. Um, uh, this just released it this summer, and I'll put a link to it. And it's got national impacts. It's got bro it's broken down by state, so it, there might be some interesting information in there for some of you. Um, we have conducted just individual impact studies on some trails uh, within the system over the past 10 years. And, you know, the, these impact, I, what I didn't put on here, obviously, the Great Allegheny Passage and the, the latest impact study they did, which was showing 50 million a year. So, you know, trying to, um, you know, trying to make the case still. We still have gaps in the system, right? Um, we worked in Ohio to get a new state trail plan developed. This came out about three years ago. And one, it, it, it was prescriptive for what needs to be done to make Ohio a world-class trail destination. And it didn't mention a whole lot of individual trails or individual trail efforts. One of the few that were mentioned very explicitly in the Ohio Trails vision was the Industrial Heartland Trail Coalition because the understanding of these regional connections and impacts. And, and again, it's because of the coalition and because of the conversations and the work that the coalition has done that we see it, we, we see the coalition work showing up in state plans and things like that. It's also unlocked different funding opportunities, right? Um, Chris mentioned the ARC, you know, power, and there's been power grants in the PA Wilds and Erie to, Pens uh, Erie to Pittsburgh corridor. That, you know, again, it's this visioning that allows for um, local partners to access some of this money. Um, ARC just launched, I'm sure many of you know about the Arise program. And, uh, you know, one of the, you know, uh, multi-use trails are going to, you know, they are going to uh, be super competitive in the Arise program. One of the key requirements within Arise is it has to be a project that crosses state. There has to be a multi-state project, at least two states. So again, the multi-state nature of this coalition is allowing our local partners to access Arise funding. If this didn't exist, it'd be really hard to make the, you couldn't make the case for a single state project. You have to be working across state lines. And so there's partners within the IHTC that are working on Arise applications now. And, and this vision is allowing them to do that because this vision ties them together across state lines. Um, in Ohio, the, the governor's office just uh, announced about maybe a month and a half, two months ago, the Appalachian Community Grant Program, $500 million uh, investing only in Ohio's Appalachian communities, 
most of which are the counties uh, within the IHTC on the Ohio side. There are multiple IHTC um, trail projects that are being put into the community grant program that, again, wouldn't be eligible, wouldn't be on the map without the work of this coalition. So it's it's allowed um, lo our local coalition partners access to funding that they wouldn't have had access to without the work of the coalition and the vision of the coalition, which I think is super important. All right, Chris, that was my quick impacts. And I were you going to wrap up with where we're going or where are we at? Uh, you know, I think I hit, hit most of the stuff I wanted to hit, Wait. Eric. Um, I did want to, you know, do do quick two little shout outs, maybe one, um, you know, we refer to the, the coalition and uh, what we really mean when we say coalition, I think it is always the, the individual trail managers, you know, working to do the, the heavy lifting at the ground level. Um, and, and I think, you know, that's, that's true, not just with the IHTC, but like the circuit trails or, you know, the Razorback Greenway in Arkansas, all of these regional trail projects are only possible with the, the work that, that the locals are doing. Um, and, you know, as a first and foremost, a, a, a bike guy, I appreciate it, you know, personally. Uh, so always, al always gets my thanks. Um, one other little thing that I, that I thought of while doing this, this little wrap up um, was that one of the, the reasons that I think the IHTC model has lasted for this first 10 years, and I think is going to push on is that, uh, I don't think we're we're too bound by our constraints. You know, we um, you know this this coalition was organized not to be a, a top down approach, but really uh, the the work that Eric and I and Kelly Pack uh, also with RTC and Andrea with uh, Rail, um, the National Park Service uh, we we kind of just do a, a little bit of of network networking and technical assistance uh, to keep things rolling. So. The fact that we're flexible uh, and we can be responsive to different opportunities, um, I think, has has really contributed to the uh, sustainability of of this initiative so far. So, I think that's pretty much what we had, Leanne. Thanks for giving us some time to chat about it. Let, let me one more thing, just based on the the chat there, the photo archive. Um, please, all of you are welcome to use the photos in the photo archive. I think you're, I mean, get in there and poke around. Uh, Chris shared the link and the password um, with the caveat that you, you will see it. There's a word document in there, but I'll just say it out loud. Um, there is a, uh, you know, there's a, there's a document in there that will tell you how to credit the photos if you use them. And also they, you know, I think it's probably obvious, but I'll say it, they can't be used for any profit this is for nonprofit use for you know you can use it anywhere and any way you want unless you are selling something with it then we that then we have a problem other than that please use them they're really fabulous pictures uh, there was a team of professional photographers all of them from the Pittsburgh area that we hired um, we we're really conscientious to get diverse faces and diverse uses so you'll see winter you know skiing snowshoeing fat biking you'll see equestrians you'll see um you know shoots all four seasons of the year um there, there's really some great imagery so and if you do use them let me know i've been trying to keep tabs here and there on how they're getting used and, and it's it's been fun to see them in the wild finally <laughs> thanks leanne you're welcome thanks uh, to both of you for that presentation Back in the day when Power of 32 started, I was involved in that effort as a planner for Indiana County. And now with um, being at SPC, it's very exciting to see how this model has progressed and I'm happy to be a part of it in different roles. Like I've attended many of the quarter meetings. And I do think it's a great model and you guys uh, provide great resources. So thank you for that presentation. And then kind of playing on this, the next thing on our agenda will be a um, presentation, uh, brief presentation from Chris Sigler on the Kiskey Junction Corridor and bridge acquisition, which is part of this whole vision. So go ahead, Chris. Thanks, Leanne. Uh, we also were suffering from some tech issues. So I think Leanne is gonna try and pop up some photos that I sent her earlier today. 
Um, this project is moving at lightning speed. It seems to have come to fruition very quickly. Um, we started phone calls with PANDOT and SPC in the February timeline and um, acquisition was completed in July. So that was pretty quick. Um, this is a photo of the acquisition um, from Roston, which is just south of Ford City to the south side of the Kiski Bridge. Um, and then it includes a four mile section from the Allegheny River up the Kiski, almost to Leechburg, about a mile within Leechburg. So 14 miles of trail plus the Kiski Bridge. And that shows the connectivity. We will connect Armstrong, Trail, Baker, Rachel Carson, Treadway, eventually Three Rivers Heritage, Roaring Run, and Butler Freeport Community Trail. Next. Um, that's the IHTC map. Um, circled is the Brady Tunnel project, but just south of there is this corridor. Or that's the Erie to Pittsburgh PA Wilds Loop map. Next. This is the IHTC map. Um, the northern dark blue line meeting the brown line is the line that goes up Leechburg. The brown line is Erie to Pittsburgh. Next, please. A couple weeks ago, we did a thing. We cut the lock off the gate that's been south of Roston for oh, since 2007. So I had to take a picture of the event. Next. And this is with the gate open. Um, nobody has crossed or gone through this gate since 2007. So we had a pretty good time. Um, next. Uh, this is just past the gate. Part of the corridor is double track. This is after they took the rail out um, via rail train and the steel ties still need picked up there. Next. And in this section, it's single track. Uh, this is near Kelly Station, the Rosebud Mine. Next. Uh, when Kiski Junction Railroad acquired the corridor, they put in 223 cross pipes and some of them including head walls, uh, which was a huge time saver for us and money. Um, all of the cross pipes are open and clear. I think we have one that has an obstruction. So out of 223, that's um, a lot of work that we don't have to do. Next. Uh, this is a rock face wall that it, this corridor is like breathtaking. It doesn't have Japanese knotweed. There's no olive bushes. It's pretty much a blank canvas and, and we're pretty excited to be developing this. Next. There are uh, two grade separated crossings that we will have to suspend service on. This is just one of them. Next. Uh, this this section, they have already picked up the ties. I would say they're probably halfway done picking up the ties. Um, otherwise, we'd probably be laying trail already. Next. I'm having a hard time getting to that next one, Chris. Uh -huh. That's my, okay. That's my okay. Sharing I'll... screen. My sharing tab is over the tab. All right, I, oh, I'll go. just, I'll yep. just go into, um, if you just want to scroll through these, Leanne, I'll just go through the next few phases that we have coming about. Oh, I got so, to this one. Uh, that's just north of Shenley. So at, this is a section that we have never owned. Um, when we acquired the corridor in 92, we actually owned a milepost 30. This is milepost 30 to 29, which we had never owned. So next, uh, these are some ra rail cars that are still in a corridor. We have actually retained the box car, um, eventually be moved to Catanning for my office. The cabooses are being moved to along the Buffalo Creek and Freeport and will be converted to Airbnbs. And then there's an open air car, which its use will be determined. And then we also got to keep the Kiski Junction Railroad engine, which is going to stay in Shenley. Next. Uh, this is the line going up the Kiski River. Um, again, it's breathtaking. There isn't any knotweed, there aren't any olive bushes. 
it's a it's a great and go. Um, we're very fortunate that we have funding to lay trail surface material. So as soon as we can get in there with a grader, we're going to um, do that and we'll probably be done by the first half of 2023. So mid next year, they'll be able to ride 14 additional miles of Armstrong trails. Next. Uh, there's just some really nice sweet spots along the Kiski. Next. Another rock face wall. Next. Next. Um, so we've already secured funding from DCNR for design and engineering. Uh, 710,000, we are in our RFP stage right now. We got our grant agreement. We anticipate they have the completed design done by um, mid late April with uh, construction starting on the bridge by July. I should be fully funded for decking, railing and substructure repairs. Um, and then in April, I'm most likely going for a DCNR grant to do some uh, bearing replacements on the bridge. But the bridge should be open by the end of next year. Next. That's awesome, Chris. Um, that is the last photo. That's the last have. one. Okay. Uh, again, this project's moving at lightning speed. Um, it's hard to keep up some days because everything it changes every day. Uh, but there's been a lot of support for it. We had a party in October, which some of you attended. We had 250 people on a Friday afternoon. Um, we our major fundraiser for the year this year will be moved from the Brady Tunnel down to Kiski just for we saw how much support we got it from the party. So we want to have a concert down there this summer. It will be at the end of June. Um, there'll be updates on our Facebook page and our website. And it, this is an important piece of the puzzle from. Erie to Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh to Harrisburg, and a big chunk for industrial heartland. So we are very happy to be um, moving this project along. Thank you. All right, great. Thanks so much for that overview and sharing those photos. It is um, exciting and um, it's a great day for Charles, right? Um, so next on the agenda, um, we'll hear from Ann and Corey, who's going to talk about the Allegheny County Trail Development Fund awards that were made. And um, I'll go ahead and share that screen um, for you, Ann. Yeah, wow, what a great morning for news full of trails. This is really exciting. Um, and I think probably the last time we had the meeting, I wasn't quite ready to announce the projects we had selected through our trail development fund. Um, we, uh, as part of the county's American Rescue Plan Act um, funding, we received an allocation here for in the economic development department to create a trail fund. So we opened it up. It was not even that long ago. We opened it, I think, in April, March or April. Applications were due in June and we awarded in September. So um, we have we awarded $22 million. There's a few other projects that are gonna be committed to in the near future. So I can't announce those yet, but um, yeah, Leanne, if you wanna just scroll down, I'll just go through the projects real quick. Uh, this was the press release from the county. And so I thought that was easier than creating a new PowerPoint. Um, yeah, I'll just run down these projects real quick. The first project is um, well, and actually, if, if you all saw the Trib, uh, Trib article yesterday about all these projects, they give a really nice um, description of how they're connecting to everything. So I'll throw that uh, link here in the chat in a few minutes. But first project, and again, many, many of you have heard of many of these things. So this one is the acquisition of the Brilliant Line which crosses from Aspen Wall down into the city of Pittsburgh, Homewood, Lincoln, Lemington neighborhoods, 3.6 miles of trail, which will be acquired probably in the next one to two years. It's gonna take some time to get through the work with the railroads. And then um, that project will have to be designed and constructed. So we're just in the beginning steps there. Um, the next project in Ben, Avon, Emsworth, and Kilbuck is a project from the Hollow Oak Land Trust. They're calling it the uh, Vinegar Hollow Greenway. It's um, 
some parcels of land that's going to consist of 46 acres, which will be, um, you know, a greenway for with public walking trails or public trails. That actually is really close to closing, so could be by the end of the year or January that Hollow Oak has that under its control and will start trail building almost immediately. Okay, in Bethel Park, they received 150,000 for design of the Drake Trail. And the Drake Trail, I believe it's maybe just slightly over a mile of trail. It's the it's an old end of an old trolley line that uh, PRT used to own and it's been given to Bethel Park and they're going to convert it to trail. So it's kind of extends to kind of south of South Hills Village, you know, south into Bethel Park. Um, another 2.5 million dollars for the Turtle Creek Connector Trail project and some of you probably remember me sharing information about that project over the past year or two where our office did the trail feasibility study and now the Pennsylvania Environmental Council is going to take the next step and take that project into engineering and design probably also kicking off um, early next year and this uh, next project in East Deer and Springdale Township is part of the Three Rivers Heritage Trail um, two segments of this which We've already heard a lot about the Erie to Pittsburgh system today, and these will be this will be a segment um, of that system. Okay, you can scroll down. Okay, Elizabeth Burrow, they applied for some funds to create a walking trail along the riverfront. So that's this one. 400,000 to Etna Borough, and some of you are probably familiar with their new riverfront park in Etna. And this trail will extend north from the Etna Riverfront Park to Shaler's Kiwanis Park. I can't off the top of my head think of how many miles that is, but it's it roughly follows Little Pine Creek. And that's just for engineering and design. And they'll um, you know, subsequently come up or do fundraising for construction. And the next project, 678,000. Um, for the Harmer to O'Hara, Harmer to O'Hara segments of the Three Rivers Heritage Trail design and engineering being conducted by Friends of the Riverfront. I should have mentioned they're also doing the other segment that I just mentioned. And um, that will also get um, underway here shortly. In Marshall Township, they were awarded $1.4 million to construct a number, I think there's six or eight segments of trail and sidewalk that they would like to get under construction. This is actually construction, so it'll be, um, you know, constructed, I think, in probably mid-2023. They've done a really nice job in Marshall Township over the last couple of years with putting together a sidewalk plan, requiring sidewalks in all of their new subdivisions. Um, they're part of the Commodore Perry Regional Trail System. So this is just some uh, creating some segments or building some segments that are part of those systems or not um, being constructed in other on other projects. So it's a really nice project. Okay, Neville Township is receiving 500,000. Um, I wasn't aware of this before um, this project applied, but although Neville Island, uh, Neville Township is an island, there's no public riverfront space. So they've received this grant and another grant where they're going to actually construct their first publicly accessible riverfront park. And it will also include some uh, bike amenities, some trails, bike repair station, and some other things. Um, we're also coordinating with them. They received an active Allegheny grant this year, which is going to look at bicycle access on the whole throughout the whole township to really help folks who live there get to this new riverfront park. So this is very exciting. Um, North Fayette Township, they're gonna receive $230,000 to engineer, do engineering and design of a trail system, bicycle system that's gonna connect basically from the point at North Fayette all the way down to the Pittsburgh Botanical Garden. So. It's mostly a system of on-road connections, but I believe there's also some 
some, some segments of it that include the Montour Trail. Okay, um, let's see. Another project, Oakmont, we call this the VOP project, Verona, Oakmont, Penn Hills, and Plum. Uh, this is a big one, 13 miles of a system that's going to be designed using the Trail Development Fund. This project actually started as an Act of Allegheny grant a few years ago, and they really took it on and, um, you know, working very hard on its implementation. So this will get it ready for construction. Okay, uh, City of Pittsburgh, actually this award goes to Friends of the Riverfront that's working with the City of Pittsburgh, but it will look at options for connecting from the Hazelwood neighborhood in the city to, to and through Duck Hollow to Rankin and the Cary Furnace Trail. Or, I'm sorry, the Cary Furnace site, um, Brownfield site, which will also then facilitate the trail connections to the Great Allegheny Passage and the Turtle Creek Trail Connector. Okay, the next one is Oh, 240,000 in the city of Pittsburgh. This awardee is the Carnegie Science Center. So they would like to repair and improve the Three Rivers Heritage Trail that crosses in front of the Carnegie Science Center. This is planning and then design um, engineering will come in a subsequent phase. Um, the next project is a project of river life. And you've probably heard, they've probably presented here in this forum about their completing the loop project. Um, and so they are going to be acquiring with our grant some properties at the end uh, on the West End Bridge, West End side of the West End Bridge um, that will be a landing point for the trail connections as a part of that system. Okay, uh, the next two are projects of the Redevelopment Authority of Allegheny County um, regarding the Cary Furnace Brownfield Redevelopment Site that we're working on. Um, many of you are aware we have ourselves a hot metal bridge there that crosses from Cary Furnace to the Great Allegheny Passage on the other side of the Monongahela River. And so the, the $5 million grant will be for rehabilitation of that bridge for um, active transportation modes only. And then the next grant down is 1.3 million, which will be the design and engineering of that rehabilitation. That project is underway and probably will wrap up in the next year or so. And then that's about it. We did give another small grant to Friends of the Riverfront. It was a $60,000 match for them. They received a grant from DCNR where they're gonna help do a lot of um, economic development impact assessment for us of the Allegheny Trail System, um, help us do some additional outreach um, with our municipalities and so forth. So that is one additional grant from the Trail Development Fund. And I also just want to mention, while I have a second, uh, many of you are familiar with the Active Allegheny Grant Program. And for 2022, we recently awarded our projects, which include um, a small grant to Ross, Ross Township. They're going to, uh, uh, the funding will be used to engineer and design um, a segment of sidewalk that will connect down Brown's Lane um, down to McKnight Road. Um, there's currently a gap from a neighborhood up Brown's Lane down to McKnight Road. So that's a great project. As well as um, active transportation plans in um, Richland Township, Churchill Borough, and like I mentioned, Neville Township. So, um, yeah, that's it. There's a lot going on and it's going to be a busy two years. So any questions? I see I see one from Samantha Pearson. The project lead for the FOP trail is uh, it's a joint project, but the grantee will the grant will be had held by Penn Hills. And have I missed anything else from the chat, Leanne? 
I'm scrolling through there now again, so let me check that out. Um, no, Chris Ziegler comments she had an easement for one and a half miles south of Parker that was prior to your presentation. Um, that's it in the chat. Yeah. Um, Any other questions? There's something about Brilliant Bridge. I'll just unmute myself because I can talk faster than type. Uh, okay. I know there was a lot of discussion, I think it may be even next transit about the Brilliant Bridge being part of potentially a busway expansion in the future. Clearly that's nowhere near happening, but is that future proofing still in the cards for what might happen with this trail so that both can exist uh, next to each other? Um, I, right now I'm only aware of any trail work in that corridor, so I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Thanks. Okay. That's all I got. I'm sure there will be lots of updates in the next couple of years as these projects move forward. Yeah, that was great. Thanks, Ann. I had seen that press release, um, but I appreciated hearing from you a little more detail that was in that release. So thank you very much for that presentation. I'm also going to take this opportunity just to give a quick commercial for our Active Transportation Resource Center. I'm going to share that home screen and uh, point out um, that we do try to uh, include news. You'll see some links there for some of the recent things that we just talked about, uh, building trails and news for planning for active transportation, communities that are um, have received funding through WalkWorks to move forward with them. Um, active transportation plans. Um, so if you have anything um, and it's not on there and you would like me to post it, please let me know. And then also under the more tab, uh, we have a, oh, I can't get there because my WebEx screen is in the way, uh, a plan library, which if you scroll through that tab, um, we have it listed out by county, um, which municipalities and the county itself have adopted plans. And I'd like to have this as up to date as possible. So if you could take a look at your county and let me know if I've missed a plan um, and send me that link to it, I'll be glad to add that. So thanks for that. And um, hearing um, no questions for Ian, we will move forward with the last phase of the meeting uh, today's forum, which is the round table updates. And again, that's sometimes awkward, awkward in a virtual format. So I'm just going to go again through the participant list and uh, call on you. And if you have something to share that you did in it, like as a presenter and as first on the list you already shared, um, feel free to do so. And if not, just say pass. So going down through the list, I have Anne Marie. I don't know if you have anything you'd like to share, Anna. I'm going to move on to Barb Haig. No, this was great. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Brandon Leach. No comment. Excellent work, though. Thank you. Brian. <laughs> no, th thank you. A lot of great trail work uh, up ahead. Looking, looking forward to getting some of these completed. Thank you. Great. Uh, Chris Corbran, I'm going to skip you and Chris Sandvig and Chris Sigler. I'm going to jump to Courtney. Um, yeah, I think Ann kind of covered a lot of the projects that we have coming up. Um, but yeah, just some other things with the partnership grant. Um, we, we're going to also be doing a gap assessment uh, for the Three Rivers Heritage Trail, similar to kind of the reports that IHTC has put out. Um, we're really excited about the economic impact study for the Three Rivers Heritage Trail. Uh, there hasn't been one done in, I think, almost eight years now, for seven or eight years. Uh, so we're really excited for that to come out as well. Um, and then we are uh, in the process of hiring a, a new project manager. We're hoping to have them on before the new year. And that's it. Great. Thank you. Dan Carpenter? Nothing to share. Thank you. Don Schilling. Uh, great presentations. I just wanted to mention, um, I found out this morning, the city of Newcastle Riverwalk project is near completion of construction. I don't know if anyone lives near Newcastle or is interested in that project, but it's a cool one to go check out. All right, thanks. I'm always interested in that project. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ed. 
great to hear all of the progress and new projects and uh, excited to see many of them come to fruition and see the network continue to expand. All right, Emily. <clears throat> yeah, it's been great to be here and hear about everything. Um, I work with Anne and she's covered a lot of what um, we work on. So. Right, great. Thanks, Emily. Eric. Uh, hey, um, I, I'll just, I want to just mention that we have um, 2 positions actually open right now. Um, if pe people can share or are interested. Uh, 1 is for events and the other 1 will be um, working with uh, advocacy and, and like infrastructure and stuff like that. So it's on our website. Um, just, you know, so if you know anybody who might be good for those positions would really appreciate a share. All right, great. Thanks. That's for bike Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah, sorry, I should have I should have mentioned it's for Bike Pittsburgh. Thank you. That's okay. Everybody <laughs> probably does already know that. Yeah. I just threw that out oh. just in case. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Harold. And nothing to add. It hasn't already been covered. Thank you anyway. All right. Thanks. Hasney. Yeah, uh, great presentation, great projects, no other comments. Thank you for everything. And Jason. Hi, everybody. No uh, updates here from Washington County. Thank you. Joe. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, just wanted to uh, chime in there. Uh, we worked with Friends of the Riverfront recently um, and just completed construction on uh, hopefully solving our uh, either Lake Wonky Feather or Eagle Lake um, issues out there. So. They're, they've wrapped up construction and uh, hopefully everyone can safely use that section of trail here in the next, you know, for the foreseeable future. All right, that's good to hear. <clears throat> Joel? I have nothing to add. Thank you. Good meeting. Thanks. All right, Johnny. I, I have nothing additional. All right, Justin Ruggles? I have nothing additional either. Katie. All right, we'll move on to Kelly. Hi, I have nothing to add, but there are some great projects coming up. All right, Kelsey. Oh, nothing to add that Courtney and Joe didn't already cover. Thanks. All right, Kevin. Uh, same here, nothing to add. It's exciting to see all the great projects moving forward. And I know there was a lot of work behind the scenes to get that funding pulled together for Kiski Junction. Uh, the timing was right, and it's fantastic to see that. And I look forward to seeing more pictures and hearing more about that project as it develops. Thanks. All right, Noah. Nothing extra for me. Thanks so much. Sure. Ruth? I have nothing additional. Thank you. All right, Samantha. Uh, I do have some things. This has been great to hear, uh, especially on that that you know big aspirational regional scale uh, project note. I have more things that are more about community connectivity, uh, local networks. Um, I would mention that uh, if anyone here has communities that they work with that are poised to do safe routes to parks or safe routes to school projects. Um, I would like to hear from you, like, if, even if you're sort of telling me about other communities that aren't you or people you work with, that would be great. Um, and I'll put my contact information in the in the chat in a moment. Um, I also want to point out that uh, a couple of resources on um, that we have been for walk works been developing. We did 3 webinars about safe routes to school uh, this fall, and they're all available on the PA downtown center website. Now I'll, I'll put that link in the chat. Uh, we also have an upcoming webinar in January. It'll be January 23rd, Monday at noon. Uh, that's going to be. Sort of about the process of developing active transportation plans. It's specifically targeted to our current what works grantees, but it will be open also to people who are thinking about applying for what works grants or doing plans in the future as well. Uh, so we, we would love to, you know, have people attend those. So again, I'll just put a couple links in the chat just now and my email. All right, great. Thanks for that update, Sam. Um, we'll move on to Spencer. Nothing to add. Thanks so much. 
All right. And then last, uh, Lily. Nothing to add. Thank you. All right, great. Thanks uh, so much uh, for all the updates that were provided. Um, I know it does seem at times it seems elementary to me to go through that participant list and call on people, but that's an important part of these forums and, and helps us here at SBC. We learn a lot about what's going on and ways that we may be able to help and then also helps other attendees. So if there is nothing else to add, that will conclude our meeting for today. And thanks again for joining.